Rachel here. I am a homeschool mom of four kids, and I'm just going to share with you how we have created a rhythm to our homeschool routine. So how we basically start our day is I have the three older children doing independent work, and they all have a different level of independent work, and I work with our youngest child first. So I work with her. She is only two years old, so the book that she has, it's a sticker book that's teaching numbers right now. We'll add letters to it. We're in the middle of the summer, so once we really get into things, we'll add some letters and other kinds of things to her curriculum. But right now, I just work with her. It takes about five to ten minutes. While she is doing that, my three-year-old is doing her independent doodle book, which is a beginning handwriting book so that it teaches how to hold a pencil. And that's something that she can do independently. So the five minutes that it takes for me to school the baby, she's doing her independent stuff. And then when she is done with that, I shuffle off the baby to the back living room to play. She plays on her own back there while I work with my three-year-old. My three-year-old has a number book and then she also has a pre-K curriculum super simple curriculum that we can breeze through. And so we can get through that in about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, my older two are still doing independent work. They have math book, uh, stuff that they can do, handwriting books, things of that nature that just keep their minds occupied. Also, they do have 15 minutes of reading that's required every day. So if they finish their independent books and I'm still not ready to work with them, that gives me that freedom to say, read for about 15 minutes. When I am done working with the three-year-old, I will then shuffle her on to the back living room and she can go play with the two-year-old. And then next up comes my four-year-old son. And so I will call him in. We will sit and do his work together. And that usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes. And we're in the summer and we're not really doing any heavy work. So it's just kind of maintaining knowledge that we know. So we do about four to five worksheets in his math book and then a unit in his language arts, which usually includes phonics cards and reading. And then by the time he's done with all of that, our six-year-old is usually ready for our attention. So once she comes and has a seat, I will shuffle my four-year-old away to do his 15 minutes of reading if he has not done so. If he has, then he's welcome to play in the back living room. And I work with my six-year-old doing language arts and math. And then also she has a couple independent books that I will just check over to make sure that she's completed the work accurately. And if not, we'll just revisit them and correct anything that's incorrect. Sometimes six-year-olds just don't know, and that's fine. So we help her with that. After she is done with her curriculum, and we're done teaching with her one-on-one, -on -one, then we move on usually into lunch. And by that time, everyone's crabby and hungry, so we feed everybody. The two babies go down for nap time, and then that is an opportunity for me to work with my four-year-old and six-year-old. They do science and history together. Kind of like a mini classroom, which is fun. And then we do some fun activities that we're on, we aren't able to really get into with all the babies around, so we can dig into all the fun stuff. School usually goes until two or three, for us and when it's done they're free to do whatever they want because they really work hard I mean they are thinking for multiple hours what keeps us on track is this I have a chart for both my daughter and my son so they each have a chart and it's got all their school curriculum and then a few other extra chores mixed in like brush your teeth make your bed read for 15 minutes uh, bath time, all that stuff is on here so that I can make sure that we're not missing anything and they can make sure that they're not missing anything. So if they come up to me and say, mom, I finished this, what should I do next? I can just say, go check your chart and see what's next. You can pick anything from the chart. It all needs to be done at some point today. So this also keeps us on track. Creating a homeschool rhythm is one of the best parts about homeschooling because it has allowed us to create a stress-free and fun and flexible homeschool environment. We are not a rigid family and schedules change and we like when schedules change. Interruptions are fun for us, but we also have the rhythm to fall back on track to make sure that we don't fall behind. 
And it's a great accountability to have as a homeschool mom.